Welcome back to the channel. First off, I want to thank you all for the support. I love the interaction in the comments. Keep the questions coming. I read each every single one of them. So, in the borehole video, a lot of you guys asked for Mandla's contacts and reached out to him. I'll keep plugging you guys into reliable, reasonably priced contractors like Mandla. You can see him here installing another borehole for me. Like I said, I've used him multiple times because he's really good. On to today's episode, we're building a septic tank. We're keeping it simple. A single compartment septic tank, which is 3 by 3 by 3 meters with an inlet and an outlet. Yes, there are multiple compartment designs, but for our site conditions and expected use, a well-sized single chamber with um, proper in and outlet tees, correct levels and a good soak away performs just as well without the extra cost and complexity. You need a qualified plumber to site the tank. We follow the lens gradient, so the drainage uh, pipes run by gravity, so that we end up with no standing water or backflow. Once we sighted it, we started digging. Met my guy from Mutare, Kelvin. The machine without a machine, that's what I call him. He basically dug the whole pit by himself. It was a Herculean job because um, there's bluestone under the surface, but he wasn't going to be beaten. Listen out for him continuously pounding the rock with a pick. So I prefer hiring local labor instead of uh, machines where possible because you put real money in someone's pocket in a tough economy. On this particular day, it was a Friday, so I decided to get the guys working on the site a couple of cases of Inguevo Cream Tata and Chibuku Super. Here's Kelvin deservedly quenching some thirst with a few sips of Cream Tata there. I mean, ideally, it would be nice if they all had the correct protective clothing, but just like I said, uh, the economy is really tough, unfortunately. We also dug the trenches for the drainage pipes and note uh, there's a junction here for future connection for the main house. It's kept for now though. We also dug a soak away too. Initially we did 2x2x2 two by two by two meters and filled it with stones which was a big mistake. We'll get to that. Keep watching. So the walls are up here and we're prepping to plaster. The white powder you see there is a waterproofing compound. It's not strictly necessary here. We have double walls um, and we're using clay bricks already. But it's a nice to have for extra moisture resistance and uh, for longer term durability. So here the inlet is at 90 centimeters, the outlet is at 120 centimeters. So we have the recommended 30 centimeter drop that helps flow and backups.
So our septic is uh, 3 by 3 by 3 meters and the outlet setting the liquid level at 1.2 meter depth. So the working volume here is 10.8 cubic meters which is equivalent to 10,800 liters. That's plenty for the main house, the cottage and the staff quarters. So with typical usage, um, the plan is to inspect yearly and pump uh, roughly every five years, hopefully. You can see here the drainage from the buildings is now fully connected to the tank. So we've plastered the inside, we've connected the inlet and the outlet, it's time to close the tank. This black frame is the manhole which will be placed directly over the inlet T for inspections and future pumping. And that pipe you see sticking there is the vent or the breather, it relieves gas buildup. We laid timber to form the slab, then cast concrete reinforced with steel. So back to the soaker way, when we tested the soaker way, it was too shallow. Percolation wasn't keeping up, so we decided to enlarge it from 2x2x2 to 3x3x3 meters. Yes, that meant pulling out all the stones again and digging deeper, which was more effort and more money. But the right thing to do is to fix it now to avoid any problems in future. This is the next day. The slab is now cured. And you can see the manhole and the vent in place there. So the septic tank is now complete in essence and all the focus now is on extending the soak away. So we did create extra work for ourselves by digging a shallow soak away first. You know, lessons learned. We've corrected it, now we've got a 3 by 3 by 3 meter pit and you can see the size difference. So I don't want this video to run too long. In part two, we'll finish the soak away and add the required inspection chambers for both the drainage lines and the septic tank. And as always, we'll cover the costs fully in the next episode. If this helped, like the video, subscribe, and drop your comments below. As always, I'm always in the comments. So see you in the next one. Peace.